Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is all about really fast and easy lunch making hacks because I absolutely despise making kids lunches. I think I was overachieving. I was cutting their sandwiches with cookie cutters into adorable little heart shapes, totally wasting my time because it just went to school and had a little vacation in the lunch pail and came back squished and uneaten. This year it's all about fast, easy lunch making tips that they'll actually eat. My first tip, it's all about the containers. I have tried so many different containers. I've bought different bento box styles, looking for this magical thing that's going to make lunch packing better. And honestly, this is the best of the worst. I really love these Rubbermaid containers because I can use them for actual leftovers. They stack really well in the cabinet, so it's not a big jumbled mess, but you can also get these little inserts to turn it into a bento box. They're also stackable, so Oh, that's just so nice for being able to stack the ice pack in between and my kids can choose what it is that they want and it all stacks together in a really nice organized little compartment. Seriously, it's like an organizer's dream come true. So of all the containers I've tried, these are definitely the best. I'm on my way now. I'm on my way now. My next tip is to put it on a stick. Now I love these little swords for fruit kebabs or meat and cheese, but if you're afraid your kid's gonna poke his eye out, you could always use a pretzel stick. So just cut up any meat that you want to use and cheese. I like using a pizza roller because I'm hella lazy. And yeah, my kids like cheese slices, don't judge. And look at how adorable it is. You could just have a little stack of meat and cheese sandwich here and then use a pretzel stick to keep it all together. So cute. My next tip makes taking an apple in your lunch even more delicious. It's so easy, simply cut an apple. I like using this dollar store apple cutter and remove the core and fill it with either peanut butter or our favorite cream cheese mixed with cinnamon. Now wrap it together with an elastic and your kids have a great treat for lunch. My next tip is my total favorite, and that is making a lunch making station. We transformed our downstairs pop fridge into a lunch making station, and I stack different baskets with prepared fruits and vegetables or carbs, sandwiches, and the kids can make their own lunches. Every basket has a little sign that says pick one or pick two. They get full control over what's in their lunch, and I only have to do the work one day a week. If you don't have a separate fridge to make a lunch making station, you can just dedicate one basket in your cabinet or basket in your fridge and put pre-made little snacks or sandwiches, things that they can quickly grab and help pack their lunch every night. If your kids are like mine and love hot lunches, no need to invest in expensive thermoses. Simply line your container with tin foil and then some paper towels or napkins so they don't get soggy and fill it with pizza or chicken fingers or hot dogs. It will stay warm and soggy free until lunch. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more organizing, decorating, and DIY tips each and every week. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time. So thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. It's story time and I have to share with you a story that also involves homeless people. And I had another story that involved homeless people and some of you were offended so I'm letting you know that this is what the story is about. You can stop watching now, but it isn't. I don't think it's offensive. I wanted to be more involved in the community. So I contacted my local library and offered to teach a workshop, like a free workshop for the community about organizing. And I was so excited about it. And I worked for a very long time. I made an hour and a half presentation with slides and the whole thing of how to transform your home through organization and we advertised this free workshop. So I showed up at the library, which is the downtown library, and I go in and they're announcing that I'm about to start and they have free water and they set up all these tables and I have the big screen and they open the doors and in come a large amount of homeless people, like a large amount of homeless people, I would say 30 or 40. The thing about the library is, it's directly across from the homeless shelter that we have here. 
and they have to leave in the morning and it's air conditioned and they get free water and there's comfy chairs so this is where they were and we were giving away you know free information so they came and they no one else came just homeless people and so i didn't know what to do because i'm not trying to be offensive i was homeless for a like a couple of years so um it's not like i'm like oh homeless people no not at all i just i'm talking about how to organize your home for two hours and i didn't want to offend anyone so i didn't know what to do i obviously i'm not going to leave that's rude but talking about how to organize your home is rude so i've just had like a full panic attack and so i just went with it and i talked about how to organize your house and decluttering oh guys and i talked about how to clean your house the whole thing to people who literally had no home and i felt like an a-hole but they were amazing and they, it was awkward for both of us, and, but they, they just were kind and asked questions. I actually helped organize the grocery cart. Wish I was making it up, but I'm not. It was a thing. And so um, that was my experience. I feel like only that would only happen to me, but it was also great. I actually stayed and we chatted. There's a feather hat, a, a man with a... You have to live in Windsor to know Feather Hat, but Feather Hat is this man, he's a homeless man that has a big feather in his hat, he wears a huge hat, he's very famous in Windsor because he just walks around, everyone knows who he is. We chatted for like two hours at the end. He's amazing, he was so cool. So it turned out to be a really great experience, but the awkwardness was something that I cannot describe. I'll see you next time.